Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from Rao TV Visualizer channel. You will continue our lab determinator labs, the video number 53. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been working now for two videos on how to deploy a Windows 10 and Windows 11 using a different method. Uh, this this method doesn't uh, need any infrastructure, so you, do, so you don't need to have an MDT server or a WDS server. Uh, these two servers we have been working on them for about uh, 20 or more videos how to uh, configure MDC, how to configure WDS, how to use both to deploy Windows 10 and different operating systems like Windows Server and any Windows operating system. As for this uh, or as for the different method that I was uh, talking about for two videos, this is something called OSD Cloud. Uh, method or SD Cloud PowerShell module method. This is a way you can deploy Windows 10 or Windows 11 using the cloud or using the internet. So this is basically some PowerShell commands that are inserted in the Windows pre-installation environment. Okay, these two when they work together, they will connect to the internet and then search for Windows 10 and Windows 11 operating system and then they will download it live. Okay, so it will be downloaded live in live action and then the hard disk will be partitioned and formatted and then the operating system will be installed. Okay, so this is basically the process of the OSD cloud. You need only to have a PC and to have a flash that contains the OSD cloud and a Windows pre-installation environment. Insert this flash in this uh, uh, PC. Uh, this PC contains the hard disk that, that is not formatted or that is not partitioned <coughs> sorry guys and then you power on the machine then <coughs> sorry guys and then uh, the OSD cloud will connect to the internet it will update itself if there is any update for this PowerShell module and then it will give you an interface okay you will choose the operating system you need to install and then it will not only install the operating system Windows 10 or 11, but it will include the drivers that are needed for this PC. For example, if your PC is Dell, it will let you choose the manufacturer uh, manufacturer drivers. Okay, so you can choose that, or it will update the drivers from the Microsoft uh, uh, update catalog website. Okay, so this uh, OSD cloud will do a lot of things. It will uh, install the operating system first if you download the operating system then install it then you will have uh, a fully functional PC with Windows 10 or 11 operational in maybe less than 40 minutes okay so this is basically the OSD cloud uh, PowerShell module you can uh, uh, use this process in a way called user driven installation so you will be interacting with the uh, downloading and the installation and the partitioning of the hard disk you need to give an answer or to give an input or you can make it light touch installation it will be a semi automated process the OSD cloud can go and download the operating system automatically for you and then partition the hard disk automatically for you and then install the operating system you will, you need only to answer the questions related to the out-of-the-box experience or what is known that like OOBE or out-of-the-box uh, or out-of-the-box uh, out-of-the-box experience okay they're saying that so we have discussed this for two videos okay today we will return back to our uh, uh, normal deployment uh, process which we use in it the MDT and the WDS we have discussed this two or we have discussed this process in a lot of videos but today and the upcoming video we will talk about how to automate this process we need a script or a bunch of scripts to automate the download of the MDT the installation of the MDT the configuration of the MDT we need something to uh, automate this process we need a script to create a task sequence we need a script to import the operating system we need a script to uh, import the applications a lot of things so i will discuss with you two major scripts that will do this kind of automation so we don't need to spend a lot of time uh, working or manually uh, uh, setting up the environment we have seen that we uh, in the previous 
videos, we have worked a lot on how to prepare the MDT environment, the tasks, uh, the steps in the sequence tasks, uh, the WDS, uh, importing the boot image, a lot of things. So we need to automate the process or to make it more easier for us. So today we will discuss a very, very important script that do that. So this script is from a user. If you go there, this is the uh, GitHub or this is the script that the user uh, uh, publish it in GitHub. So basically, this uh, this guy, if we go to his script, so first we will download the script. So we go to this uh, GitHub uh, uh, website, mdt-setup, degressive slash mt-setup, and then we will download this PowerShell script that will automate the MDT uh, installation and configuration. We will see that step by step. You will see what this script will do. But basically, this is the script. If you go there, here is the guy, or he is here. We can go to his website. So he have a GitHub website and his uh, original website, or he have another or a second website. If you go and see that. Here is his website, MDT set up a script to make MDT deployment easy. Okay, this is his website. You can read, uh, or we will now read the features and requirements to run this script or how and how we can use it. Okay, so basically we can go and see uh, the steps from uh, the uh, GitHub website. So we can see here that uh, he's talking about his script features and requirements designed to run on Windows Server 2016 plus so you need to have Windows Server 2016 okay or further this is the MDT server or the WDS server the script must be run as an administrator tested with PowerShell 5 so it will use PowerShell 5 version and it works with PowerShell 7 so it is tested on both PowerShell versions and it is tested on Windows Server 2032 so we can use it on different Windows Server environments okay so I think it's it will not work with Windows Server 2012 so he, he didn't uh, say it can work with 2012 server okay so anyway Windows Server 2012 now it is expired or it is not or its life cycle or its supported time is ended it's ended in October, I think 29 of October this year. So we will not use Windows Server 2012 anymore. Anyway, so let's see how we can use this script. The script will install and configure Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and its prerequisites on a Windows computer with an internet connection. Okay, so you need to have an internet connection because the script will download the MDT and other prerequisites. Okay, so it has been tested on basically Windows Server 2022 Standard Edition Virtual Machine. The script, what you will do, it download the installers for Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, the latest MDT batch to, or fixes, the latest ADK and WMPE. This is to make the Windows pre-installation environment, okay, or the boot image that we will use through the MDT, and it will be imported in the WDS. Anyway, silently install all of the above, create an MDT deployment shares and folder structure. It will do or it will create two folders in the MDT. One will be called uh, built share folder and deployment share folder. We all know that in my lab, we have two folders, capture share folder and deployment share folder. So the build share folder resembles in my lab, the capture share folder, okay? So he will do two folders, one for the capturing process and one for the deployment process. Okay, download Windows 10 11 from the media creation tool or he will download the Windows 10 or 11 ISO image. We don't need this step because we have already the ISO images downloaded. Convert the Windows 10 11 ESD to WIM for MDT and import. By the way, if you need to import an operating system to the MDT, MDT uh, will only accept uh, certain Windows ISO images or certain uh, files from this Windows ISO images. So for example, if you downloaded uh, a Windows 10 ISO image from Microsoft, sometimes the installation file or the Windows installation file, ex its extension is .esd. MDT doesn't accept this extension. You need to have the Windows install file in the Windows ISO image to be .wim. Okay, so here he is, uh, he will convert if you have 
the Windows installation file in the Windows ISO image.esd, he will change it to WIM and then import it to the MDT. Then create package folders and selection profiles. This is related to the drivers uh, that will be installed on uh, the PC packages or be driver packages and selection profiles. We have encountered something like this when we were working with our MDT lab. We have made a selection profile for our Lenovo PCs. Okay, import the sequence, it will create the sequence, standard client task sequence and standard server task sequence. Set the configuration of custom setting to INI, it will uh, configure the custom setting automatically or it will import some setting you decide or you uh, type it in the or you are uh, configured it in the powershell uh, script okay generate the boot media i think here is talking about uh, putting it on a flash we all know that you can deploy uh, operating system through mdt through the network or through bootable media if you have it on a flash or something anyway we will not uh, we don't need this step uh, I think he's talking not about the boot media, or about the, mo the boot uh, image or boot boot whim that will be imported in the WDS. Anyway, create packages and driver folders and selection profiles. When you complete the server, will be configured to be able to deploy a Windows 10 or 11 image. There is an option to create a build and capture environment. So this is basically build and capture. So we'll have a call called build share. This is uh, basically a capture process environment to create a golden image for Windows 10. Once captured, the image can be imported to deployment share folder. So it's called build and capture. In our lab, we have it as capture only. So he's saying it build and capture and then deployment share. So we'll have two folders in this scenario, build and capture, or it is a build share folder and the deployment share folder. You can change the names. He can give you some user preferences. You can customize it to your needs. Okay. And create a task sequence using the template included. So this script or this script will do a lot of things as we can see here. And it will need some user interaction. So it's saying, for example, you need to import the drivers. You need to add applications and other things specified to the image you want to deploy. These steps we will use also other scripts to automate it. So don't worry. Even the script do about 80% of the automation of the MDT installation and configuration. We will use and other scripts to complete the remaining 20%. So let's see what are the user preferences. When you run the script, it will ask you a series of questions to customize your installation. First of all, the Windows version and update code. So what Windows version you need to install? So he will download it and install it for you or import it to you. Download and convert Windows ESD to the twim. Okay, build or optional build share path or this is the path of the build share folder and the build share name so we need to know that we or in the mdt we have the folder that contains the scripts and we need to share it so we'll have a build share folder and the deployment share folder and we'll specify the location and the share names and then the time zone that will be in the custom setting the time i can choose to do it the keyboard local if you need to uh, add a keyboard also in the custom setting to time i this will be uh, will automate uh, the inserting of the keyboard local and uh, the uh, time zone okay when you install the operating system so the keyboard local he is here he, the default is english okay the domain or the domain group or uh, the mdt admins okay we all know that in the mdt process we need a user to be responsible for uh, deploying the operating system and installing the applications during the capture process, a lot of things. So this should be uh, assigned to a user in the Active Directory. So if you have a group in the Active Directory called MDT admins, this is better to do that. You can create it and in, and create a user in it and in it and then put it in the custom setting to tie an eye or or he will ask you about the MDT admins group and he will ask you the user that is a member of this group because you need to use this user to join the pc to the domain if you have this uh, configured in the task sequence and also this user will be used to uh, install applications and also it will be used to access the mdt deployment or capture share folder we all know this so here the domain user for the domain join okay 
domain password for the above user okay so all of these are basically very very simple things to do domain what is the domain and OU for the new PC account the OU that the PC will be uh, moved to so this is also another important uh, info you need to uh, specify the OU location that the PC that will be joined the domain to be inserted in it or to be uh, located in it okay and then the WSO servers if you need to have your uh, PC uh, updated through the WSO server so all of these will be questions that will be asked during the uh, using of the script we will see that in live action we will see <clears throat> how the script will work it is a very very simple process but this is the uh, explanation of the script i have already uh, done, uploaded this script to uh, cloud ai and i asked it to explain it so he's saying here yeah, this is a powershell script uh, this is the script by the way so we can see here this is the script so i have already downloaded it and this is the script okay it we will run it and we will see the different things so i have already copied the script and asked cloud to explain it <clears throat> this is a powershell script to fully install and configure microsoft deployment toolkit mdt for windows os deployment or operating system deployment this prerequisites or this prerequisites assumes that a windows server with is installed this is not uh, a correct answer you don't need to have is installed an internet connection to download files this is correct a domain environment functionality this is script downloads the mdt installer adk assessment deployment toolkit adk windows pre-installation environment add-on mdt update batch optionally downloads windows image via creation tool converts windows esd file to WIM format so this is an optional option or this can be bypassed or you can uh, ignore this option uh, completely okay then it goes to the installation installs adk features required for imaging install mdt batches mdt to the latest version and then the build share setup creates folder structure for build share shares the folder as smb share this is correct map drivers to the mdt build provider this is basically simple import custom mdt provider setting imports Windows OS swim files to the MDT. This is importing the operating system. Import selection profiles and packages related to the drivers. Create default OS build the task sequence. So this is basically what also the website was referring to or it was explained in the website. But here we can see that one thing that sharing uh, the MDT folder and we remember that there is some uh, permissions on the MDT uh, build share folder or deployment share folder we need to have some uh, permissions on these folders we need to have our user which in our scenario was mdt.build this is an active directory user it should have full control over the build share folder and the deployment share folder okay so it can access the scripts and uh, work with the MDT folders okay we will see that we need to monitor the permissions we will have uh, a look on the permissions because uh, the script will not fully uh, put the permissions we need on the uh, mdt folders we will see that we need to tweak it a little bit okay and then we will see here build share configuration the custom setting to tie i the bootstrap to tie i all of these will be configured by the script okay and then the deployment share setup creates folder structure for the deployment share share folders map deployment shares and mdt import selection profiles this is also done in the build share configuration or the build share setup creates default os deployment task from the template okay this is good and then the custom setting and the bootstrap so the same it will create the folders and then it will begin working with the custom setting to i and bootstrap to tie i okay or it will import the custom setting to tie i and bootstrap to tie i at the end finalization sets administrator group permissions on search this is a good one the domain admins or the mdt admins should be on the permissions or should have permissions on the shared folders or mdt shared folders provides setup summary to the user in summary it fully automates the installation configuration and customization of mdt for os deployment to simplify the setup process okay so this is basically very very simple uh, uh, thing uh, I think I need to have something about the cloud anyway so 
if you need to know uh, what are the resources that we are working with to automate uh, the MDT deployment and installation, this is one of the things we have already discussed this, uh, this uh, GitHub or the user, his website, okay, and his GitHub. We will see that when I ask it, uh, Cloud or not Cloud, uh, Windows Copilot, it give us some uh, links to how to automate uh, the uh, MDT. I told him I need a PowerShell script to automate it, to automate it setup of MDT installation and configuration. And this is are or these are the resources I actually used. Okay, so this is one we have already. This is the first one we have already displayed it. The other one is this website, use PowerShell to automatically install and configure MDT. I have used it as a reference, okay, because this contains a lot of things. You can use it also. And also we can go to, it's already there. I have already said that to you guys or have already displayed it. So this is basically two sites, okay. This learn how to use PowerShell to automate MDT. This is the link. And this is another link, okay. And this is a fourth link, and this is the last one. The four, they are four links you can use to uh, or references for how to make uh, MDT deployment easy or MDT setup deployment easy. Okay, so let's go and begin our uh, our lab and see how we can uh, deploy. Uh, MDT in an or make it automated in an automated way. By the way, before going to the MDT, I need also to uh, uh, say a note about OSD Cloud. Remember that we have said that we can install a custom image using the OSD Cloud. The OSD Cloud uh, goes to the internet and download the official Windows operating system from the Microsoft website. If you need to deploy uh, a custom image, you, sh you you need to first upload it on a storage. Uh, or online storage providers like Google Drive or something, and then this is the link or this is the uh, this, the the command you should use: start OSD clouds, image URL, and then this is the path to your custom image minus index one. If this image or this custom image contains contains uh, a number of uh, or multiple images, actually you don't need to do this because it's only one image. And this line should be replaced in this script. Remember, this script I've used it before. This is uh, to make the uh, deployment light touch installation. You should uh, replace this line with the line that I am referring to in this uh, Word document. So this is basically what you can do or how to use OSD Cloud to uh, make a light touch installation for your custom image. So this is something I forgot to say. So let's go and see how we can automate the process of uh, the MDT uh, setup. Let's go and see that. So if you go there, and then I have already downloaded uh, the the link, or I have already downloaded the script. <laughs> so yeah, let's go. This is the script. I have tweaked it a little bit or added some lines to it. We will see what are these lines. So these lines, basically I have added a couple of lines to install some crash fixes or additional crash fixes that uh, need to be installed on MDT to avoid a lot of problems during uh, the operation of the MDT. Okay, so this is the script. We need to run it and see what will be the input or let's see what uh, we will be asked to do. Okay, this is the script. <coughs> so I'm just uh, seeing the script, okay, and and try to uh, edit some of the setting to see if uh, I need to uh, customize these settings to my scenario okay and by the way he will give you some questions that through answer gate it will customize uh, the PowerShell script to your needs okay so let's see 
when we run the script, what are uh, the questions uh, and the answer of it. So these are uh, the questions that will be asked. The keyboard, the time zone, and a lot of things will be asked, and you should provide it so he can uh, begin the automation of the MDT setup. Okay, so this is the operating system it downloaded from the internet. By the way, I have passed this question, okay, because I have already the ISO image, okay, so I don't need to download it from the internet. <laughs> <clears throat> but you can use the script to do that. So there is also an optional question if you don't need to uh, install Windows 10 or to import Windows 10 you can import Windows Server <coughs> anyway so you use it as a Windows 10 so we will create a task for the Windows 10 okay so let's see when we run the script the questions that will be asked and continue or we we'll see will continue the process and see how it it is very very smooth we not need to do a lot of work okay so I think we can begin or we can bypass this real quickly okay and begin I think uh, the process so here again so here I'm just passing the script delivery you will see down that I have already edited the section for the custom setting the tie and I here I have added my custom setting to tie and I and the bootstrap to tie and I for both uh, the capture share folder and the deployment share folder. Okay, so I have already uh, tweaked the script. Okay, to add my uh, custom setting to tie and I for the deployment share and for the capture share. Now you would like to begin the installation? Yes. Then uh, what will be the Windows version you need to install? Windows 10. Okay. You need to convert it to WIM, no. The path for the capture share folder. Here we will name it as capture share. I or I will make a folder named capture share two. Okay, so I need to have uh, a folder named capture share two. By the way, don't don't create the folder. It will be created for you. So here I am creating a folder for my capture share and name it capture share two, and this is the first or this is the name and as for the location it will be in the F drive okay so this is the capture share folder and then press enter and the name or the share name for it we will name it uh, capture share two dollar sign that means that the folder is hidden okay but the uh, admin or the domain admin can see it okay so here we are naming the capture share folder uh, or the share share name and then the deployment share we will make another folder called deployment share 2 okay okay so we have two folders capture share 2 and deployment share 2 and the name of the deployment or the share name for the deployment share folder okay you know we name it deployment share 2 dollar sign okay so it will be hidden <laughs> and then press enter now we can ask it or I can bypass this because it will be set in the custom setting to tie and I and also for the keyboard all of these are can by, be bypassed because I have already uh, configured it in the custom setting to tie and I and here he is telling you to uh, enter the domain group that is responsible for administering the MDT if you have a group like that you can provide it if you don't have it okay it's okay but it is good to make a group called MDT administrators in the Active Directory and create a an user in it and this user will be responsible for the MDT uh, deployment installation configuration okay so here is you define the group and then you define the user that is a member of this group or the MDT administrators group okay so in my lab I have something called MDT.build okay this is the name and then after that you should provide the user or the username or sorry the password for this user and the domain that he is currently a member of okay so we can this is the password and then 
the domain is skynet.internal so we can see <coughs> the process is very very simple and then uh, the OU that will be uh, the PC will be inserted in it we don't need to I don't need to identify this because this will be also in the custom setting that I and I so we can see you can ask some or you can answer some questions and the other questions can be uh, uh, automated or answered by the custom setting to tie and I <clears throat> and then you want to use <clears throat> the resource server this is another thing and then you should specify the name of the WSOS server anyway this is also can be inserted in the custom setting to tie and I so I have already bypassed this and then we can see he's giving you a summary configuration summary and then you tell him to begin the process <clears throat> Okay, and tell him yes. And then it will begin downloading uh, the required files. And one thing we need to make sure it is closed, something called user uh, control access or user, I think it's user access control. This is something <coughs> that uh, any change in the operating system will be prompted to allow it or not. For example, if you are installing an application, the user access control or user control access, I think, will prompt it for a message saying that should I allow this program to be installed or not. So this will interrupt the automation process we need to, or we need the Windows to accept uh, uh, the installation or to run the installation files without this prompt. Okay, so we need to have or we don't need. Uh, the administrator to allow the applications to run or not this should be done automatically show what we should do we should disable user uh, control access uh, temporarily and then we can just after that return it back let me show you all how this can be done first of all it is installing the ADK let me show you uh, how we can uh, bypass this thing let me go further and show you all how we can this can be done so here we will go to the setting and then what we will do we'll tell him user let me show you all user <coughs> account control okay user account control setting okay <coughs> this is the option that we should uh, <coughs> we should uh, we should disable it. okay we can go further here is installing the adk and the windows pe so we have already downloaded both but let me show you the, the step concerning the user access control. Again, let me turn it back. Okay, user access control. Again, so we will type it here. Let me show you all where we can get it. Again, setting. Okay, and then <coughs> we'll type here at the system user, user change control. Okay. and here we go we can see here that we tell him user account control helps prevent potentially harmful programs for making changes to your computer so this is basically the function or the job of the user account control it will prompt you uh, or will alert you for any changes done to your system through the installation of the programs so the program that will be installed on your PC will do changes to operating system. So he will prompt you every time you need to install an application, it will prompt you to allow it or not. This will interrupt the automation process. So we should uh, make it to never notify. And then we can, after that, return it to the normal process, which is uh, to notify me, okay, after that. So we should uh, return it back after we change it, okay. After or after the automation of the uh, MDT will be done. So this is one thing you should uh, focus on. Let's ask the AI what is user account control. If you go there and tell him what is the uh, function of user account control in Windows Server 2022. <coughs> 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 
Okay, it's security feature. Let me uh, after it finish, we can we can see that, or we can uh, read. So let's see what was the answer. Here he's giving you the answer, uh, and this answer is from some websites. User access a security feature in Windows Server 22 that helps prevent unauthorized changes to the system. This is how it works. Helps prevent malicious programs known as malware for damaging a computer and helps organization deploy a better managed desktop. With UAC, user access control, applications and tasks always run in a security context of non-administrator accounts unless an administrator specifically authorized administrator level. Anyway, this is a little bit uh, not simple to understand but let's ask uh, Claude for uh, or make it simple let them explain in simple terms in simple terms let's see how you can simplify this answer Okay, so this is a very, very simple uh, explanation. User access or user com account control. It's like security guard for your computer. When you or a program wants to make a big change to your computer, you ask, are you sure? This helps stop bad guys, malware, from making changes you don't want. It's a way uh, for your computer to ask for your permission before making important changes. So it is a good thing to have it on your computer. So keep it safe. To keep it safe. So this is basically a very very good answer. If we can go and ask, uh, uh, let's ask uh, Claude, okay, to have the same answer or to answer us, okay, in simple terms. So this is how we can use the AI to help us to, uh, uh, to, 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 to understand some of the concepts or some of the things we cannot uh, understand. So for example here, <coughs> it is giving us an example. So it's giving us the explanation and then the example. So let's see what was the answer. The user account control. It performs an important security function in simple terms it helps prevent unauthorized changes to the system by requiring administrator privileges for making changes without uac all users should have full administrative access which is dangerous uac requires confirming administrator privileges whenever a program tries to make a change this is correct for example when user tries to install a software or make changes uac will prompt it for administrator approval the prompt will ask to confirm the action and require administrative credentials in some cases this elevates the permission to administrators temporarily for approving the task so in everyday use regular users can do their normal work without administrative rights but system changes will trigger uac prompt to prevent unwanted changes admins can still do their work by providing confirmation when prompted in summary the core function is adding a checkpoint for administrative access to improve Windows security and prevent unwanted changes. Anyway, so this is a basically a good answer, a simple answer. So let's continue and see the installation. So we can go now and continue. He now he will continue the uh, installation without interruption or without prompting me to allow the installation. <laughs> So this will take a lot of time if you can go there now it will continue i will can show you all the the final results so we can continue now and see at the end what will happen we can continue like that until the changes happened or so let's continue and see uh, okay let me continue continue until we see the final result so now it is finished let's go and see okay what is the final result and open the first of all if we try open like that we will see that 
the uh, the MDT toolkit is installed and downloaded. We can see here it is installed and downloaded when we try to open the deployment, uh, the MDT benchmark or the MDT console. We'll see a lot of things uh, configured. <laughs> So first of all, we when open when we open the deployment shares, we will see we have two folders created: the capture share folder and the deployment share folder. So this is basically uh, done by the script. And then let's see also what is configured. We will see that the custom setting to tie and I is configured. If we open the properties, we will see that in the rules section, we will see that the custom setting it's already there. Okay, we will see that there is two lines that was not imported successfully, but most of the custom setting is imported. And for the bootstrap, we will see also there is some lines missing. We need to make sure it was imported successfully. It was not imported successfully, and we will rectify that or we'll correct that with another script. But anyway, we can see how the script works. If you go to this is for the deployment share. If you go to the capture share, we will just see that also the custom setting dot ini was updated. If you go there, here are the custom setting. And as for the bootstrap, we will see the same. So this is the script have uh, saved a lot of time uh, configuring these. And then we will open or we will see the other changes. We will see it will uh, create folders. Okay, if we open that, we will see under the operating system, it will create a folder for Windows 10. Now you can import the operating system directly to it. And we will see how we can automate this step as well. So we will see that. And we will see also in the packages, it added some uh, a folder in the packages. Okay, and we will see it configured a lot of things. Let's wait and see again. It had already created the task. If we go there, it, it, is, it already created a task sequence. Okay, one of the things also that is there. As for the boot image, it has already uh, created the boot image. So this is another important step. If we go there, the boot images are already created, but we need to update it after uh, uh, making or after configuring the task sequence. By the way, it create or it will create a task sequence, but it is a blank task, task sequence. You should uh, configure the steps. I didn't, or I didn't succeed in finding a script to import the task sequence steps. Okay, this is not all right. I didn't succeed in doing that, but it, you are welcomed all to see if there is a script to do that. Okay. Anyway, so. I think it can be done by copying uh, the task sequence itself. This can be done. Take a copy of it and then import it or replace it. Anyway, we can see here that uh, in the out of the box, we can see our couple of folders are created for uh, uh, the Microsoft Corporation, uh, VMware, WMPE. So these are created automatically as well as for packages. <clears throat> these packages, uh, it is not for the drivers, by the way. It is for... Uh, Patches, Windows patches, or something like that. So we will see that the script has created a lot of things. Okay, created a folder for the operating system, creating folders for the drivers. But one of the things this script didn't do is importing the applications. This will be done using another script. So don't uh, bother yourself. There is a, a second video to automate the remaining steps that this script didn't automate. So let's wait and see. Here we can see a lot of things are created. <clears throat> task sequence. Okay, the task sequence was not created. This also script, we will see how we can automate the creation of a task sequence. This script didn't succeed in doing that. <clears throat> so we will use another script, okay, to do that. Okay, or use a couple of scripts to do that. Anyway, so now we can go and check the permissions on the deployment share folder and the capture share folder. We will see that uh, we should add some or we add additional uh, permissions. If you go to the sharing, okay, we need to uh, modify the sharing permissions and the security permissions. If you go to the permissions, 
we need to add the MDT uh, build or the MDT dot build uh, uh, Active Directory user, okay? Because I am using another server, this user is not here currently or is not created here. We need to add the MDT dot build to the share permissions and the security permissions, okay? So this is also one thing the script didn't do. And also this can be automated using a script, okay? This can be done or it can be automated. So we can see the script have done about 70 or 80 percent of the work, but still we need to automate some steps using using other scripts. So let's wait and see how we can do that. Anyway, I have modified this script to uh, install a couple of additional fixes. Remember that we have uh, in our lab uh, a couple of uh, problems when we're working with MDT. First of all, the script error we are when we were deploying or using MDT for deployment, something called script error appeared and we have fixed it. And another thing, the crashing of the MDT console, okay, this also was uh, fixed. Okay, let me, uh, or I will add two lines to install these two fixes, a crash or the fix for the crash of the MDT console and the fix for the script error that appears during uh, the deployment or the capture process using the MDT. Okay, so let's add, or let me show you all, we will add a line. So here we will add a line. We'll tell him, write host. This is, or this will prompt the PowerShell uh, to write a message called installing additional, <coughs> installing additional fixes. So here, this is my, uh, 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 my, uh, uh, customization I'm adding additional lines so here I'm telling him to uh, or we are copying a line it will copy a couple of files and replace it in the MDT folder okay this it is like uh, fixing the problem okay so we have two lines okay let me show you all what what this script will do is two lines will do it will copy a couple of files from uh, local drive hard disk to the MDT setup folder. So let's go and see. There is two, uh, let me show you all, there is two fixes. Okay, this is the fixes. Okay, we need to uh, put it inside the setup or the MDT setup folder. Okay, this is the script that automates uh, the process. And then we will modify the script to copy these two files from this folder to the MDT folder. MDT installation folder, okay? So this will take a couple of minutes. We can go and continue. Now we can see here that the crash fix, the first crash fix, it will be uh, this file, okay, will be copied from my local hard disk to the C program files, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit templates. So this file should be in this location and replace the original file in this location. And then, as for the fix, or this is the fix script error, as for the fix deployment error, this is another thing, okay? We need to go to this folder and add our clash fix folder. Don't worry, I have we have done this before, and we will see that. Let me, uh, don't worry about that. Here we are telling it to copy uh, these two files from the local hard disk, okay, to a certain folder, okay? So I think we can... By, by that layer quickly. Let me show you all uh, how this will be or the final result, okay? Let me show, for example, this is the location of the file. It's in the MDT setup folder. It will be copied and go to the program files, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit templates. So it will be copied there and added in this location, replace the original file, okay? So let me uh, show you the other one. Okay, so if we go further, here this will be the final result. Okay, these are the crash fix. There is a folder called 86. So this folder, it is in MDT setup folder or locally on the hard disk. These two folders are locally on my F, F partition. They will be copied to one to the C partition. Okay, program files, so and so templates, and the other one for uh, 
C program file with uh, 86 folder, Windows kits, assignment, so and so, pre installation environment. So these two fixes will be copied from the F drive to the C drive in different uh, folders. So this line will add additional fixes. Okay, so this is basically the end of our video. In the upcoming video, we will see how these fixes will be uh, installed and we will talk about additional scripts that will automate other things in the MDT. For example, a script to automate the importing of the operating system, a script to automate the creation of the task sequence, a script to update the MDT folders, a script to import the applications, uh, 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 import them and create folders for them. So we will see that in the upcoming video. Uh, so stay tuned. Hope this video is informative for you all and thank you all for viewing. Thank you so much.